Hello everyone, this is Datsun Obo. You're watching Stay Inspired on Television Nigeria. Today on the show, I'm talking about uh, strategic collaborations. It's important that we do this. Now, in the course of what I do, I have the opportunity or privilege of speaking to entrepreneurs. And we have people who have business ideas that they have, but for some reason they haven't started working on those things. And uh, one of the options available to people who have ideas, probably you have an idea, you don't have the funds to execute it one other strategy that you can use to give life to your idea is that you have to seek out for strategic strategic collaboration seek out for people that you can partner with uh, in terms of uh, achieving the, the goals or the ideas that you want to bring forth now if you think of all the major brands if you think of Facebook Microsoft and all the major brands around the world when they started you find that the owners of those companies actually spend time to look out for co-founders uh, or people that they can collaborate with to build the idea. So as we go on, I like to define two words, the word strategic and the words collaboration. The word strategic means relating to the identification of long-term or overall aims and interest and the means of achieving them. Collaboration means the action of working with someone to produce something. So I'm saying that in order for you to achieve certain things that you want to achieve with your life, with your business, whatever it is that you're looking to accomplish in with your life, it's important also that you look out for the people that you can partner with to ensure that those things get done. Someone said this to me once and it stuck. It says, when you delay on executing an idea, it's the most dangerous thing you can afford to do. In our life or in, 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 our, in this dispensation, what we find is that people come up with all kinds of ideas. It makes delay makes your idea obsolete. That's the point. When you delay in acting on an idea, you can actually make that idea of no relevance because you've delayed for too long. So it's important that you look out for people that you can partner with on projects, on, on the things that you want to do. So how do you access people to collaborate with? How do I access? Maybe that's a question you're, you're asking. Well, you're talking about strategic collaboration. So how do I collaborate with people? Let me give you a few points and a few questions you can begin to ask yourself as you think about collaborating. The first thing is, when you're looking out for people, these are questions that you must ask yourself. Do they have the right skill sets that I need? Do they have the right skill sets that I need? The skill sets that will help you accomplish your goals, the skill set that will help you accomplish the things that you desire to accomplish. And number two. Do they have the right temperament to fit into what you are trying to achieve? Do they have the right temperament to fit into your team? People have the tendency, you know, when you have an idea, an exciting idea, with that mindset, you want to bring everybody and anybody into your team, but it's important that you find out if they have the right temperament. Do you guys work well together? So if you don't work well together, then that's a no-no. It's something that will ultimately hinder and limit your progress in terms of achieving that particular uh, objective that you want to achieve. So number three, the question you have to also ask is, or you have to consider is, are they willing to commit to your idea until it begins to generate some form of revenue? So if you're starting out, if you're a startup, this is something that you ought to be thinking. Are they willing to wait? Are they willing to delay immediate gratification? Because sometimes if you want to build a business, you have to also be willing to wait to a certain point before you begin to enjoy the benefits that comes from executing your idea. So so are they willing to wait? And number four is, are they people of integrity? Can you trust them? Do they have a track record of integrity? It's important also that you find out people that you can trust, people that can be loyal to you and people that can be loyal to the particular cause that you are involved in. And number five, do they have a track record of working well with teams? You know, if, if someone is not able to work well with teams then and you're bringing them into your team, no matter how smart they are, instead of being a blessing to your team, they might eventually uh, become a problem for you in the long run. Let's go on a quick break and after this we'll continue as we talk about strategic collaborations.
Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, you're watching Stay Inspired with That's Noble on Television Nigeria. I've been talking about building strategic uh, uh, collaborations. And uh, it, we've talked about a few questions that you have to consider when looking out for people that you want to collaborate with. The next thing I'd like to talk about is once you have set up a team, it's important that you are able to inspire your team to keep working on that particular idea. You know, being an entrepreneur is extremely difficult and you have to consistently be inspired enough uh, to continue on the path that leads you to your desired destination, all right? So uh, the question is, how do I inspire people? You know, I've, I've, I've gotten people on my team. How do I inspire them to keep them working, to keep them believing that this idea is a viable one, that this business is a viable one? All right. And the, the thing I always tell people is you cannot give what you do not have. You can't give what you don't have. For you to inspire people, you have to be inspired yourself. You have to be passionate about the idea. And the passion that you have for the idea is what you transfer to the people who are on your team, people who are consistently following and believing that this idea, it's a viable one, all right? A team basically is a group of two or more people. So if you have two or more people working on a particular thing, you can say that's a team and you have to consistently inspire them and, and, and share the vision with them. So people have ideas, but they're not able to sell it. Now, when you say sell an idea, what comes to mind for most people is to, to, to develop products or services that you sell. No, but it goes beyond. It goes beyond that, that you have to be able to sell the idea to your team, which I call your internal customers. You have to sell the idea to them. To, to and if they buy into the idea, then following you or remaining inspired is something that they will do naturally. Okay. So I've been talking about the fact that you cannot give what you don't have. If you took a sponge and you dip it in water and squeeze that particular sponge, what comes out of it will be water. So it's important you as the founder of the business, as whatever position you hold in your organization, that you are a person who is fully inspired. Now, think about any company that is doing exceptionally well, and you, if you go back into their history, you discover that it wasn't easy. They had opportunities, they had times when they felt like giving up, where they felt like the business is not working, where they could not meet up their, their, their payments uh, or sustain the business as it were. And, and, and they went through all those things and, and they were able to achieve results at the end of the day. So it's important that you are fully inspired, that you fully believe in your idea, you fully believe that the result that you believe is possible will definitely become a reality. So as I conclude on this segment, I'm saying to you, Look out for people that you can partner with. Now, you might find people who have the money but are looking for a viable idea to invest in. And then you have a win-win situation. You have the idea, you have the manpower to execute that idea, but they have the money and then you come together in uh, a way uh, that would benefits uh, everybody involved in the whole process. So as a, as a means of suggestion, I say be, you don't go into verbal agreements with people. It's important that you have things written down, that you get lawyers involved. If you're collaborating on whatever level, that you get lawyers involved in the collaboration so that if something goes wrong, you can always refer to the agreements that you both had or that you had with your team at the beginning of your partnership. I hope you've taken something out. If you have questions for me, you can drop it on the comment box when you watch this video on our social media handles as well. You can send me a message. We're about to go into the next segment. I have a phenomenal guest that will come on this show. Don't go away, stay with us. Hello everybody, welcome back. You're still watching Stay Inspired with That's in Obo on Television Nigerian. Today on the show, I have a phenomenal guest, Mr. Nsika Nabasekon. He is a serial entrepreneur, he's a life and business coach, he's a trainer, a facilitator, and leader, founder of the Nsika Nabasekon company, and also the creator at Life Has Taught Me platform. Mr. Nsika, thank you so much for joining us and honoring us with your presence today. Thank you for having me. Okay, welcome, sir. Now, there's a question I usually would ask everyone who comes on this show. This show is about being inspired and staying inspired as well. So how do you stay inspired? We, I know you do a lot of things, but how do you stay inspired? Uh, 
let me compress the answer. Stay okay. inspired means you have something you're reaching for. Okay. You have a goal, a dream, a desire, something like a target. Okay. So every day you evaluate yourself. Am okay. I, how far am I from that target? How close am I? Okay. And the thing about targets is that they are mobile, they keep moving. So when you when you start your mental target, yeah. It moves further. Okay. So you create another one. Okay. So staying inspired means I'm I'm always reaching to that goal. That okay. Goal so that target can also be like a goal that a person has. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So that's how I stay inspired. That's, wow. That's one way. Okay, that's one way. So which other way do you stay inspired though? Uh, looking for inspiration. Okay. So you can get inspired through things that happen, things you see. Okay. Things people say something and it, you get a, a spark. Mm -hmm. of inspiration wow. and then you you let that spark inflame you okay so the spark ignites something in you sure and that uh, enables you to stay inspired okay okay that that's fantastic so tell us a little bit more about what you do you're an entrepreneur you're a life and business coach there's so just give us a little more insight into some of the things that you have done in the course of your entrepreneurial journey firstly yeah I have failed. <laughs> a lot. Okay. I failed a lot. Yeah. And uh, one of the challenges people have is to look at failure as a, a an event. Okay. So failure is not an event. Failure mm. is like a milestone on okay. your journey to whatever it is you want to do. Okay. So failure means oh that's that's just one way not to do it anymore. Of course. So if you look at if you properly situate failure mm -hmm. in its in, in give it proper perspective, yeah. you see that failure. If you learn the lesson mm -hmm. from what you thought was failure, then it, it, it's not failure. It's no longer failure. So I have failed my way to where I am today, okay. and, and I'm, I'm feeling differently. Okay. So I'm feeling forward, like like John Maxwell said. It's okay. Good. Okay. And um, yeah, another thing I do is um, I I look out for opportunities. Yeah. So in my business, I get to meet a lot of people. Okay. And, uh, we, we need to remember that life, your success or failure in life, okay. is, is based on your relationships. Exactly. So relationships need maintenance. Maintenance and, and once you're successful in one relationship, it opens you to other ones. Mm -hmm. So in those relationships, you get you get to meet people with ideas and you think, oh, I could be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that comes to your strategic collaboration okay. uh, discussion. Yeah. So when you're a part of that and then relationships usually open up to other relationships. Exactly. And then when you, when you, when you have uh, successfully managed a relationship, you have experience. Of course. Which leads you to more relationships and the cycle goes on. Absolutely. Wow, that's interesting. The good thing you talked about uh, managing relationships. I'd just like to ask you to hammer on that a little bit. And if there are a few tips you can give so that our viewers can also benefit from, like, how do you manage a relationship? How do you manage relationships that, would, that are beneficial to your business or to you as a person? Okay. Um, I have a friend who I noticed many years ago. Mm. He would pick up his phone and randomly give someone a call. Okay. And I'll listen to him on his end of the conversation and he would say, I just called to keep in touch. Wow. So I asked him, why call someone to keep in touch? Mm -hmm. Not that he had any message to mm -hmm. say or ask mm -hmm. anything. He says, that's how you maintain relationships. Wow. So that you keep someone in the front mm -hmm. of his mind. Mm -hmm. You're in the front of that person's mm -hmm. mind, not behind his mind. Mm -hmm. So Relationships need maintenance, mm -hmm. and when when you when you when we are talking about relationships, you you have to go into relationships not thinking about what you can get, okay, but what you can give. Okay. Now it, it, it's it's people re react negatively to people who are always thinking of taking from them, taking and not giving. Mm -hmm. So you need to look about what you can give. You need to think about how you maintain your relationships. Yeah. And you need to think about what 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 is the aim mm -hmm. of this relationship? What am I trying to do in relating or trying to build a relationship with this person? Mm -hmm. So are your are your aims selfish? Are your aims broader? Are your aims um, small? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're in a relationship with someone and they are they are put up because your thinking is small, mm -hmm. your your scope is small, mm -hmm. your thoughts generally mm -hmm. small, and they don't do small. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to gauge whoever it is you want to get into a relationship okay. with and 
think of the reasons why. Okay. Ask yourself why. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. You know what? What a lot of people would actually would think is like I have to consistently check on the people who I'm in a relationship with. I think it makes sense as I'm listening to you. But the practicality of it, if you're not, if it's something that you're not used to doing, might be another issue, don't you think? Yes, it is. But. Uh, everything rises and falls on a decision. Okay. So you decide. Mm. This thing I want to start, mm -hmm. you have to stay inspired to maintain it. Of course. So you need to build relationships. Relationships, relationships take time. Yeah. So you, 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 you look at it as forming a habit. Okay. You wake up in the morning, you need to brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. You probably didn't like it as a child. Mm -hmm. You had to be forced. Mm -hmm. But eventually you got used to it, so it became part of you. Yeah. So you, in the same way, Building relationships and maintaining relationships, oiling the wheel of relationships. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you, you avoid instances where someone will say, ah, where have you been? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. Okay. Except you don't want to have a relationship with whoever is asking such a question. Okay. Okay. Now, another question I'd ask you is this. You know, you ha we have people who are, especially like young entrepreneurs who ju have just started business or are already in business for some time. And some might feel... Uh, talking about relationships that they do not need mentors or also like some would not see the need to engage the services of a, a business coach like yourself. So what? how would you respond to that? I would respond that um, you, you could either do things the hard way mm -hmm. or the smart way. Okay. No, not easy, the smart, mm, the smart way. way. So the hard way is making mistakes you know, learning on the on, on as you go on, mm -hmm. stumbling and falling, and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. The smart way is looking for who has gone ahead of me on this road. Okay. How can I get into a relationship with this person? Mm -hmm. Now you have to understand that there are primary and secondary relationships. Okay. So, for instance, a primary relationship means I know you one on one. Okay. So I can ask you questions mm -hmm. or get mm -hmm. across to you for information mm -hmm. or whatever. Now, a secondary relationship means. I have access to his social media page. Okay. I have access to a book he's written. Okay. Or I have access to his tips. Okay. So I listen to them because he says he talks about his journey. Mm -hmm. He tells his story. Mm -hmm. So his story, I'm inspired by what he did and which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. So his story inspires me mm -hmm. and I get nuggets from there so that I don't repeat the mistakes he made. Yeah. So that makes my journey shorter. Okay. Okay. Oh, makes a lot of sense. Yes. You know, well, you, you also like, um, aside from Nigeria, I have the opportunity of like speaking to um, life coaches, business coaches, and uh, one thing they consistently complain about is like certain organizations would not like to pay you for that particular service. I, I've had a personal experience when someone said to me, ah, it's just about talking. You just come and talk and then you want to get paid. Uh, a certain amount. So I just want to pick your brain on how, what you think we need to do in terms of selling this message to people uh, to understand that this is something that you need, number one. And uh, because if someone has taken time to develop themselves in a particular field, maybe in agriculture or in whatever field that they have expertise in, and they've taken that experience and to coach you so you don't have to go through that and it's their time, it's their experience and everything else that they're bringing to the table and you're not willing to pay for that. Okay, the way to, to overcome this hurdle mm -hmm. is to prove your metal. Okay. Show how valuable mm -hmm. you are. Uh, I'm reading a book now and it says no one remembers the best person or the the person who does what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. who they remember is the remarkable person. Wow. The remarkable person. He okay. made a remarkable impact on you. So mm -hmm. you are a business coach or a life coach or a trainer, whatever it is you are. Be the person that who, who sells the value that they, they look at and they can't do without. Mm -hmm. So they see that this guy is a valuable addition to our organization. And when you, when you, when you show value, and not command whatever attention you need to. Okay. okay, okay, So just add value. Add value. Let value be the, your driving force. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now you're the curator at Life Has Taught Me Platform. Yes. I want to ask you about this. It makes, uh, I don't want to assume like I understand 
the totality of what you do on that platform. So just tell us a little bit more about what you do on that platform. Okay, first, first let me talk about how I got it. Okay. Life has told me it's a vision that God gave me. Okay. And because of the enormity, the enormity of the vision, mm -hmm. I first threw it away that, no, it can't be me. I can't be the person who did this kind of okay. thing. This thing is too big for someone like me. How? How? I started asking myself, how? I started looking at the size of the vision and the... I looked at it as a giant. I looked mm -hmm. at myself as the... The dwarf. Mm -hmm. So I kept sweeping the vision under the carpet till the carpet became big. I couldn't ignore that the vision was under the carpet. And so I apologetically went back to pick it up yeah. and finally implement it. Now what life has taught me is is a platform mm -hmm. for for lack of a better word, is a platform where people share their life stories. Okay. Now we understand that these are challenging times. These are times when, when everything is going to the left. Okay. So people are going through challenges. People need to hear that what I'm going through is, is not new. Someone has gone through it before, has probably overcome it, mm. and is a roaring success. So what life has taught me is doing is expanding the reach. Okay. For instance, if we're having a private conversation and we're not you know, going to a broader scope of people, right? Now, yeah. It would be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Sure. So most people share life stories one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. You know, your friend mm -hmm. will come and meet you that, man, these are my challenges, this, I'm, I'm stressed and this and that. And you offer words of encouragement. Yeah. Maybe tell him in your story, I had this challenge and this is how I overcame it. So what life has taught me six to do is to expand the okay. platform reach a broader set of people who probably do not have access to a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm -hmm. with anybody, but need someone to tell them, I've been through this before, I know what you're going through, but you can overcome it because I did too. Mm -hmm. That's what life was talking wow. about. Wow, that, that's incredible. That's definitely adding value and uh, selling our stories because we don't tell our stories no, enough. We no, we don't. Yeah. And we have a, a huge challenge in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Let me not talk about the rest of Africa. Yeah. For instance, you want to interview Abroad, let's say America, you have, you have people who have written books on their story. Mm -hmm. You have Steve Jobs' story. Mm -hmm. It's in a book. You have uh, uh, Michael Dell's story. Yeah. It's in a book. You have Mark Zuckerberg's story. It's in a book. But if you interview a Nigerian entrepreneur, mm -hmm. business tycoon, yeah. someone who's on Forbes or wherever, mm -hmm. how did you make it? <laughs> it's the grace of God. What, 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 wow. how, 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 how do I implement the grace of God to get to where it is you got? Do you understand? So, yeah. so we need to make people open to telling their stories, mm. as long as you're not fraudulent. So it, it should be something that you want to share. Mm. I, I had a conversation with a man recently, and he, he blew my mind. He said he has achieved so much in his life that he has come to a point where he realizes that life is not about income. It's about impact. Wow. That he doesn't want to have people who... He doesn't want to come down of his house and then see people hanging around. Mm. So I do call him out. Oh, no, come to me, say what, what you want to do, and he will help you however he can. Mm. Because uh, how, how far can your money go? Sure. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I mean, you have people with so much wealth, yet you, you drop dead. And I have another friend who told me that the, 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 the surest thing about this life is that you're not getting out alive. Wow. So how do you want to be remembered after exactly, you're gone? Exactly, exactly. You, mm. you have to stop thinking, move away from self. Mm. How selfish can you be? Move away from thinking about me, myself, and, mm -hmm, I and all that. Mm -hmm. And think about the larger, the larger people. Because okay. what, you, what you do for people can never be forgotten. Exactly. Never be forgotten. Exactly. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to spread the message. Okay. To move away from income. To place of impact. impact and that's where you become a significant person as opposed to just being successful where we are we are, we are we being i don't want to be significant i want to be remarkable wow i want to make a dent mm. in the sands of time you know how how you sit on a couch mm -hmm. and then when you start <laughs> the couch shows that someone exactly so mm. when i leave this planet mm -hmm. i want it to be that someone left okay here mm. because you see in in if you go to the cemetery yeah which uh, Mans Moro says is the is the, the richest uh, place in the world because of people who do implement their mm -hmm. ideas and everything. If you go to a cemetery, you have, let's say for instance, someone was born in 1980 and died in 2018. So you have on the on the person's tombstone 1980 mm -hmm. dash, dash 2018. 
So the most important thing you do in your life is what you do with that dash. Mm. What did your dash do while mm. you were here? Do you understand? Did wow. you just pass through? Mm -hmm. Like some people in, in our university said, I, I went to school, I went to school. just passed through. <laughs> and nothing, you have nothing. Mm. You, had, you have to make a dent in life. Yeah. You have to live beyond you. There's, there's more to life than you. Exactly. Exactly. So let's uh, bring this to a close. We're basically running out of time. Okay. But uh, if you were to give one or two words of advice to entrepreneurs as a business coach, what would be those advice? That the get? first advice I would give is have a vision. Have a vision. Have a vision. Okay. For whatever it is you want to do. And you implement it. Okay. Now, having a vision doesn't mean that uh, you, your vision has to be cast in stone. Okay. So, you, your vision is to do a particular thing, but you could have different avenues of, of getting to achieve that goal. Yeah. So, your vision be flexible. Have your vision and be flexible with wow. it. Now, the second one is remember, if it will work, whatever it is your vision is, if it will work, mm. it will require work. Okay. So you, you Wow, I like that. If it will work... It will require work. So for your vision to work, you have to do the work. Okay. Nothing, there's no sense of entitlement. Yeah. That someone's going to give me anything wow. a platter of gold. Mm -hmm. There's no platter of gold, but there's a sense of fulfillment that yeah. I made this work. Mm -hmm. I made this happen. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? You can yeah. sit back and say, wow, I did this. And it will probably inspire you wow. to go and do something wow. else. Wow, wow, wow. That's phenomenal. Thank you so very much. You, you have to come back <laughs> seriously. <laughs> we I, I, we I, have, I, you have to, you have to I, come I, back. I, Thank I, you so much for all this. Uh, we can go on and on and uh, begin to talk about this. But this particular thing that you said just struck me. If it will work, you have to, to require work. You have to be willing to also put in, do, put in the work. Thank you so much, Mr. Nsikan Nabasiakon. Thank, you, Thank you so much Thank for you, coming. Thank you. It's All right. pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is our show for today. We've been speaking to Mr. Nsikan Abasiakon. He's a serial entrepreneur, life coach, business coach, trainer, facilitator, and leader. He's the founder of Nsikan Abasiakon Company and the curator at Life Has Taught Me platform. He's so eloquently shared vital uh, wisdom with us today. So if you have a question for my guest, I'd like you to drop those questions at uh, the comment box when you watch this video and we'll pass it across to our guests to also reach out to you. Some of the things that he talked about is living a life of impact as opposed to just existing. How many people are you affecting with your, with your position, with your office, with the money you have available to you? People are not remembered for how many cars they drove in their lifetime. They're not remembered for how many houses they, they built in their lifetime, but they are remembered for the impact that they made in the lives of people. Our show continues next week. You can follow us on social media. Our social media handles are on your screen. Uh, connect, let's get to hear from you. If you're an entrepreneur, you have a business you'd like to showcase on the show as well, you can also leave me a message and hook up. Let's connect. All right, whatever you do, ensure that you're adding value wherever you find yourself. Until next week, stay blessed. Bye-bye.